Right, pupils fed up with dire school conditions recently took their complaints to the Basic Education Department. Meanwhile, in Gauteng, Equal Education has found that 29 schools are constructed entirely out of asbestos. To find out what is being done about these issues, we're joined in studio by Gauteng Education MEC Paniazala Sufi. MEC, thanks for your time today. Good morning, Elia. Are you well? I'm good, thanks. And you? That's fine. Thank you so much. Right, the pupils seemingly are not so good. They're quite frustrated at the moment. A couple of issues on the table. Let's deal with the issue of asbestos first. Um, Equal Education has said that 29 schools in Gauteng, that's in various places yeah. across the province, are made entirely out of asbestos, and more than 200 others are constructed partially from asbestos. Um, that despite the fact that uh, asbestos has been banned since 2008, and we know that it takes time for infrastructure to be rolled out to replace these structures, but surely 10 years or 11 years um, is more than adequate. When can we expect this to be fixed? Thanks for the opportunity. Let's put it quite clear that the democratic government has never built asbestos schools. Um, and those asbestos schools were built by those that didn't want us to get quality education. So the mandate to remove them was a huge mandate. It was massive. They were all over. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that we've reduced them to 29, it demonstrated political will to eradicate all of them. And in Gauteng, we've costed them. We know where they are. And we know when they will be removed, appointed contractors. So there will be history. Mm. Uh, Unfortunately, for the pupils who attend in those schools, the risk of cancer um, you know, and, and, and other dire health consequences of, of you know, permanently being in an asbestos structure, I mean, they are from 8 o'clock in the morning until 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's so true. How, how do we then put their minds at ease? Because unfortunately, it, it seems to be getting to a point where um, they're no longer so content with the answers from government. I'm glad even equal education have indicated that they've not received reports that they are under medical supervision and other things, because we monitor that situation closely. Uh, we've got health uh, fa uh, facilitators that monitor those particular schools. We are putting chemicals there to ensure that they're not contaminated. So there is a plan to manage that so that it doesn't transform transfer uh, to our children. Check. If I want to eradicate them, we would have eradicated them tomorrow. But there are processes. You have to go to local government, you have to get contractors, you have to get budget, you have to get... So there's a deadline for 2020. Are we going to meet that deadline? No, we, we've been clear from the word go that our deadline is 2023. Uh, I don't know who, who gave the 2020. It's the national minister. Unfortunately, it was uh, on the basis of the agreement with equal education. In Gauteng, we're very, very clear. On 2023, there will be no single asbestos schools. There will be no single mobile school. We've got the budget. We've got everything in our uh, 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 prepared and planned. So we're quite convinced that come 2023, all these particular schools will actually have already eradicated them. Hmm. Uh, you go to the south, we've eradicated. As I'm speaking to you now, there are seven schools that are in construction. So there is a process to eradicate them. The issue is you have to balance everything hmm. because... If children have to study under the tree now because they've not built a new school in a new area, there are other risks. There will be other risks as well. So you balance all these things. So we are saying where we are as a department. We know that 29 schools, they've been budgeted for, they will be eradicated, the contractors that have been appointed, there is a budget that we have got, which was the most difficult thing to have, to have the budget. Now that we have the budget, let's allow contractors to, to do these things. Exactly. But I also want to own communities. We have no time to waste now because there are two schools that we're supposed to have eradicated by last year in North Hesek in Soweto and Rest the Val in the Val. The community stopped those projects for two years because they demanded uh, local contractors to be employed. These are things that delays these particular schools. By now, we'll be speaking about 27 schools rather than 29 schools. Because those but surely schools they, they have a point there in terms of working with local government in terms of job creation. Is there not room to appoint local contractors? That is why you go on a public tender. So you can't, when government advertise tender, you don't, you don't apply, and then you come and say, I've got the best right to get this tender. It doesn't work that yeah. way. You have to apply, and those that have applied must be given opportunity to absorb local uh, uh, contractors. But I want to assure all organizations, including equal education, we are not treating them like opposition, we are not treating them like political parties, we are treating them like a valuable partner that must guide and monitor all of us. But they must be very, very careful that they are not used by other people to score other political points. There is a political will. 
administrative support and most importantly community willingness to resolve all these particular schools and the 29 schools in Gauteng I'm here because I know we've budgeted for them come 2023 no one must give us the, the date of 2020 we don't have that we have 2023 as Gauteng and we've said it for the last four years that our target is 2023 and by 2023 all the schools will fall so we have that on record now let's um, address the march by equal education yesterday to the Department of Basic Education yeah. They handed over, or they had a placard outside uh, listing a number of the key performance areas, um, uh, which was then accepted by members yeah. from the basic education department. Um, can we take that accepting of that contract um, as a willingness to abide by the dates? They also set out key performance dates um, in that memorandum. What is, what is the negotiation with them as one of the stakeholders? In Khaudina, joining us late, mm -hmm. we are far advanced on some of the issues they've raised. Were they part of your Lakhotla? Yeah, we are far advanced. The Khotla is meeting with the minister, but we have published our roadmap to 2024 as a Khaudin provincial yes. government. So I will allow, I will request Equal Education to go and engage our plan. We've got a five-year clear plan, what we're going to do in year one, year two, year three and the last year uh, of our political term so that we can deal with all the imbalances uh, in the education space. But our focus is one thing let our children get uninterrupted quality education so that they can compete with the best in the world. Let's recruit the best educators and let's have facilities that will make education an interesting component of society. Right. And, and how, what is your response to the fact that uh, those marching yesterday said uh, that uh, Minister of Basic Education, Angie Mochecha, has had two terms. Um, she's been in power or in that position for 10 years and had ample opportunity to address uh, the issues that they've raised that this is the last chance um, that they are giving basic education, not only provincially but nationally, another chance to address the concerns raised not from outside but from pupils themselves. I think history will judge us that we are the best minister of education ever since democracy came in. And it's only when she leaves office that people will appreciate mm -hmm. that uh, we had somebody that has stabilized the education sector, has fought for huge funding, uh, in the sector, but most importantly, she has given us a curriculum that can make us to compete with the best in the world. If you see the education of South Africa now, yes, it's not I where it's supposed to be, but it's going towards the right direction. And today it's her birthday. I want to wish her a happy birthday, Minister Mutsekha. Mm. Uh, maybe I'm not the right person to defend her because I'm a product <laughs> and uh, I'm the person that she mentored for so long. And I look forward to her leadership. And I really believe she's holding this particular sector together. And I, we, we wish her our unconditional support. Well, we also uh, wish her well in her endeavours. We know it's a hard task, is, but we will is, be holding the Minister yeah. to account along with uh, other organisations. Thank you very much for your time, Thanks MEC, for, uh, for coming in. Thank you.